Hi and welcome to another episode of PeaceMeg TV. In today's WordPress tutorial, we're going to be taking a look at a more complex version of the 3D parallax effect in Slider Revolution 5.2. We're going to take a look at the whole process, so we're going to create the graphics in Photoshop, we're going to save them, we're going to import them into Slider Revolution and WordPress, and then we're going to put everything together, and I'm going to explain step by step the whole process of what we're trying to achieve. But if we take a look at the demonstration, you can see that as I move my mouse over, you can see we have a full 3D effect of everything on the screen moving as if it's in situation. So let's take a look at how we can do all that now. So the first thing we're going to do in this example is we're going to create the three graphical elements. In this example, we're going to deal with an iMac, we're going to deal with an iPad, and we're going to deal with an iPhone. And instead of us creating those ourselves, we can use a fantastic site called psdcovers.com that has actions available for free for Photoshop that allow you to create these and get really creative with the whole interface itself that's going to be displayed on each one of these different computers or tablets and phones. So... All we need to do is come up to psdcovers.com. The link is in the description below, as all of the links for this will be. And what we're going to do is we're going to scroll down and we're going to filter our information and we're going to come down and we're going to choose Apple. So that's going to filter out all the things that we want just down to the Apple application, sorry, the Apple actions. So we can scroll through until we find one we're looking for and let's just keep on going through. So you can see we've got iPad mini We've got them in black, we've got them in white, we've got the phone at different angles. So just simply go through these, find the ones that you want to use, download them. And once they're downloaded, we'll install them. So I'm just going to find the laptop. And we just can use the Retina Display version. So all I need to do is simply come down, click on Download and Read. Once we've done that, that'll ask us to choose to download the action. It'll automatically download. Once it's done, we can click and open it up. Once we've opened it up, you can see we've now got a Photoshop ATN file, which is an action file. And all you need to do is simply double click that. And when you've got Photoshop installed, it'll automatically add that in there and add it through to the actions. So I'll just double click that. That'll open up my Photoshop if it's not already open. And it'll just load it into the actions palette. So if we open up the actions palette, you can see now I have the MB15 Retina 001, which is the action we just loaded. So... Once we've got that installed, we're ready to go and move on to the next phase, which is starting to put all the graphics together. So if you're new to actions in Photoshop, they're a very, very simple concept. What they are is a series of steps that have been recorded. And what we can do is we can play those back and it'll run through them one at a time, take all the actions that are required, each one of the steps to get to the final stage where we can then move on and do what we need to do. So with these actions from PSD covers is we've got two stages. We've got the first step, which is where we can create the actual what's on screen layout. So if we want to put a website or we want to put the iPads sort of normal homepage kind of layout, we can do that quite easily through stage one. Once we've done that with that file open, then we just continue on to stage two and that will then create the actual mock-up of the relevant piece of hardware we're dealing with and put the screenshot that we've created and inserted into it. Now, I'm not going to worry about putting screenshots in there. I'm just going to run through the both steps. But obviously, when you do this, you're going to want to put in your own images, and that's quite quick and easy. Everything is labeled up to make sure that you can you know exactly what you're going to be doing. So stage one is going to be to prepare the template. So we just click on that. We'll hit the play action, and that will now go through. And as you can see, all the different things are being carried out, and we now end up with a mock-up of what the screen content can contain. So this is just placeholder. So we can simply just take a screen grab of a website or a desktop or something we want to put in there. Then we can simply paste that in, resize it to make sure it fits exactly as we want. And we've got that stage all good to go. Like I say, I'm going to leave it as it is just to speed up the whole process. So we've got two options now available to this. We've got render scaled or render retina because when it comes to the Mac uh, lap laptops, the MacBook Pro and so on, there are two versions. You've got the retina display, which is a much higher resolution version, and you've got the normal MacBook Pro. So what we're going to do is, you know, I'm not going to worry about that. I'm going to set it to be the scaled version because, well, in this instance, it's not particularly important. But, you know, you may want to be specific about exactly which version you end up with uh, with rendered out. So we'll hit play on the second one. Now, bear in mind, we have to make sure that this first screen first screenshot is open. 
and then we can specify step two, hit the play button. That's now going to use that graphic. It's going to go through, and as you can see, all the actions are carrying out on the right-hand side, all the new layers and everything being created. Once that's run through, if we just shrink this down, you can see we now end up with a fantastic version of what a MacBook Pro would look like. Excellent. So that's the actual rendering of the MacBook. Now I've done the other two, which is the iPad and the iPhone. So I'm not going to run through those because the process is exactly the same. You just choose the relevant action, drop your screenshot in there, run the second option, and uh, you're good to go. So what we're going to do now is we need to resize this, get rid of the background, crop it down a little bit, and output it as a PNG file because we need to use the transparency around the edge of this image to make sure that if we put anything on the background of our slider, that that will show through. So that's pretty easy. We just choose the crop tool. We'll crop this down to fairly close to the edge of the mock-up. I'm not going to go crazy close to it because I want to keep, if there's any shadows on there, I want to keep those as they are. So I'm just going to get that close to where I want it to be. I can tweak that by using the up and down arrow keys to position it exactly where I want inside the actual crop marks. Once I'm happy, you can press the enter key. We've now cropped that down. So the next thing we can do is scroll down to the bottom and turn the background off. That's now given us the transparency ready to start working. And the final stage we've got on this before saving is to simply come to the image menu and choose image size. I'm going to set this to be somewhere in the region of, I'm going to deal with the height, not the width so much. And I'm going to set the height to be 450 pixels. Now, I'm not worried too much about this because I'm showing this from a demonstration purposes. Obviously, when you do this for the internet, you need to make sure that you get the size that's going to work well for you. And you also need to make sure that you optimize the file size so you don't end up with huge sliders. But like I say, I'm dealing with this offline, so I'm not going to spend overly, you know, too much time on dealing with that side of things. So we'll just hit OK. And that's now going to resize that for us. I can zoom in so we can see this is the size it's going to look on our screen, which is fine. I can simply come up to File, choose Export, and I can choose Quick Export as PNG. So that will now just ask me, where do I want to save this? And I'm going to use my desktop. And I'm just going to call this iMac. I'll say MacBook, I should say. You can tell I don't use Apple products other than phones. So we'll hit save. That will save that out now as a PNG 24 bit. So we've got all the transparency and everything intact. So that's pretty much everything we need to do inside Photoshop. We can now switch over into Slider Revolution 5 and we can start assembling our slider. So we're in Slider Revolution. I've got the latest version installed, which is 5.21 at the time I record this video. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go through and set up the basic parameters that we want to work with to create our slider. So standard slider is fine. I'm going to come down. I'm just going to give this a size of a maximum of, say, 550 pixels. Give us some wiggle room around the edge of our uh, graphic for our, our laptop. I'll set it to full width. Uh, I'm just going to give it a, a name, which we're going to call this one 3D Parallax. That's fine. And I'm going to give it an alias of the same. We need to come over to the Parallax and 3D settings. We need to enable that so we can start working in 3D with our slides. Now, there are a couple of settings that I want to configure on this. And these are pretty important. So we need to enable the 3D and Parallax. We can choose to disable this on the mobile, but I'm not going to worry too much about that. And I'll just simply click on 3D to enable that. And then we can choose the settings that we want underneath. So you can see we've got the option to have a 3D shadow, which I don't want. Uh, I want to leave the background enabled, so I'm not going to disable that at this point. And um, we can leave everything else on there. But one thing I do want to change is the default depth. And the reason for that is... We don't want the background to move too much. We want the elements on top of it to move. And I found that with Slider Revolution, you can sometimes get a kind of weird over effect in the corners when you're moving things around if you don't set the background to move with it. So by setting it to a low value of 10, and we can adjust this again if we need to, it means the background moves ever so slightly, but we can compensate for that movement by making the same color background as the same color background to the row itself. And I'll show you that a bit later to see what I mean. So we've got the settings we want in there. Let's just check everything's where it needs to be. Yep, it's looking good. So we'll just come up, hit save, and we're then ready to go in and start actually creating the slide itself. So 
First things first, let's set the colored background. So we'll set it to be a solid color. I'm going to set it to be a slightly light gray. That's fine. I'll copy that because I'm going to need that later on. So we've set the background color, as you can see. So we're now ready to start building our slider up. Now there are various different elements to this. We've got the iPad, the iPhone, and the MacBook. We've got some text and a button. And what we're going to do is we're going to apply different levels of 3D to these so you can see certain things on uh, corresponding planes. So let's put the first element in. Let's just start putting our elements in. So let's just simply come up, choose to add a layer. We want to insert an image. And as you can see, I've got my iPhone and my iPad. I just need to install or upload my, my MacBook. So I'm just going to simply drag that in from my desktop, let that upload. We'll give it some alt text. That's fine. And that's our first element. We'll insert that, position that where we want. Now this may be a little big, so we might have to resize that ever so slightly, but for now, let's not worry too much about it. So this is the first level. Let's go in and add, oh, wrong one. Let's delete that a second. Let's add another image. This time we'll put our iPad and we'll overlay that. Now obviously these are not scaled particularly brilliantly, so I'll just make that a little bit, actually let's just make the MacBook a bit smaller, is it? Just so it doesn't look so strange size-wise. Like I say, I'd obviously take more time if I was doing this properly or for a client. But I just want to sort of show you how it's all done more than worrying too much about the sizes of all the different objects. So let's just insert the phone. And let's just put in some text. So we'll just come add another layer and we'll add a text layer. And we'll just call this one 3D Parallax. Okay, that. Let's just set some styles up on there. So let's just come through and we'll just choose a font. So I'm just going to choose Railway. Let that load up. Once that's loaded up, we'll set the size. 96 should be about right. We'll set a line height of 96 to give us the spacing around it. And we'll just reduce the size that down to quite a thin font and change the color to pretty much black. Actually, let's make that a bit smaller. That'll do. And finally, we're just going to put a button, which will be our call to action. And we'll just go for this one. That's fine. Position that where we want. Okay, so we've got all our elements in there. At the moment, they are just stacked on top of each other, doing nothing in 3D space. So I'll just save this just to make sure that if anything happens, I've got a copy of it saved. And then we're going to move on and create the 3D effect on this. So let's start off with the MacBook, the iPad, and the iPhone. So we'll select the MacBook, and what we do is we come to the 3D and parallax settings, and as you can see, we've got the ability to specify the depth. So what we're going to do is we're going to set this one to have the smallest amount of movement, so it's sitting at the back. So we set that to 5%. We'll then choose the iPad. We'll set that to 10%. Choose the phone. Set that to 15%. So we've now got these operating on different levels. So let's just save that a second. And the next thing we're going to do is we're going to specify what the 3D Parallax text and the actual click here button, what level they're going to be on. Now they could be different altogether. We could make those look like they sit in front of all the other elements, or we can make it look like they're actually in line. So what I'm going to do for this example is I'm going to say that the 3D Parallax text is actually on the same plane as the iPad. And we're going to say that the button is on the same plane as the iPhone. So if we save that now and then we switch over to our test page, we can take a look at what this looks like. So we're onto the demonstration page now, and as you can see, everything is laid out looking nice and neat and tidy. The gray background, and everything extends out nicely. And once we take our mouse over, you'll see now how all of the different elements will animate in 3D space. And as you can see, with the 3D parallax te text and the actual button, how they're on the same plane as the different elements we've got in the phone and the iPad. So everything looks like it's fixed 
to the various different levels. So you can see that the button looks like it's sitting in front of the actual 3D parallax text, and the same goes with the actual different three different elements we have here overlaying each other. So everything is kind of moving around as if it's in 3D space. So it's all pretty cool. So there we go. That's how we can take some actions in Photoshop, create great looking mockups of these different elements, how we can then import them into WordPress and into Slider Revolution, how we can set them on their own individual planes and how we can make everything animate in 3D to create what looks like a fantastic end result that you could use to promote applications, websites and things like that, any, any kind of purpose you'd have for this. Well, I hope you found this useful. I hope this has given you an insight into how you can create really, really effective 3D parallax effects inside Slider Revolution. Well, if you found this useful, please give the video a thumbs up. If you have any comments, questions, or feedback, please pop those in the comment section below. We read every comment you post and try to answer every single question you ask us. Remember, we release new tutorials every Wednesday. And until next time, take care.